Hello, this is Sarah Brash. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So I think this is going to be my last video for tonight. And I wanted to do another video on Karen Acts, which are grossly unconstitutional hate crime legislation. But I wanted to specifically talk about the difference between mens rea or mental intent and uh, motive in this video. That's what I want to talk about. So I did a video before about Karen Acts and why they are grossly unconstitutional hate crime legislation, why they are thought and speech crime. And I talked about how the reason why is because they criminalize motive allegedly racist motives. They criminalize motive. They make motive an element of the crime. And in the last video that I did, I talked about how this new batch of hate crime legislation, these Karen Acts, are so brazen and they're different from traditional hate crime legislation. Because in traditional hate crime legislation at both the state and federal level, the legislators at least pretend to abide by the U.S. Constitution. They at least do some hand waving to say, oh, we're not actually, they tried to hide, even though they're not pulling the wool over anyone's eyes, they try to hide the fact that they are in fact criminalizing motive and making motive an element of the crime. So, I want to talk about today specifically why making motive an element of the crime is unconstitutional. It's unconstitutional thought and speech crime and also the difference between, in particular I want to talk about the difference between motive and mental intent or mens rea. So there are always two elements of crime. There's the actus reus, the act and then the mental intent, the mens rea. And what mental intent means is it means you intended to perform the action that you performed. And so the one of the first examples they use in law school typically to make this clear to everyone is the sleepwalker. Like we are not going to charge the sleepwalker who kills someone with first degree murder because they were sleepwalking and they obviously did not intend to kill someone, okay? So that's always like pretty much the first example used in law school to get the point across. That's what mental intent means. And per the model penal code, which is created by the American Law Institute, and then most states model their penal codes after the model penal code created by the American Law Institute. There are four degrees of mental intent. There's purposely, there's knowingly, there's recklessly, and there's negligently, but it's criminal negligence. So it's not your tort negligence your civil law tort of negligence. That's not what we're talking about here. So, so purposely means um, you m meant to basically perpetrate whatever harm against another person that you perpetrated. You meant to commit the crime. Uh, knowingly means you knew the person would be harmed if you performed the action. And then recklessly means you just basically just didn't care. <laughs> you just didn't care. You know, you, you were reckless. You didn't care. You recklessly endangered someone else. You didn't care what happened to that person. And it's not that you knew that they would be harmed. You just couldn't care less if they were harmed. And then... Um, negligence but a, but to a criminal degree and that means that basically you you should have known you should have known what you were doing um so anyway so those are the four degrees 
And then, so that's what mental intent is. Mental intent is not motive. And so many people get confused about this and that's why they think it's okay to criminalize motive because they're thinking of mental intent when they're mean mo motive. Um, so, so mental intent is an aspect of the crime. It is an element of the crime. We do criminalize mental intent as an element of crime because we don't wanna, we don't wanna punish people to the same degree if they didn't intend to commit the crime, like the sleepwalker. We're not gonna charge the sleepwalker with, with first degree murder because they didn't kill anyone with malice aforethought, okay? And so that's another thing that people usually end up saying to me next is that, well, what about first degree murder and malice aforethought? I think people get hung up on the word malice a forethought and basically what that means is just premeditated. So when you see malice a forethought for first degree murder, just think premeditated, think the highest degree of mental intent, think purposely. Premeditated murder. So you thought about it and you really meant to kill this person. <laughs> um, anyway, so, so what motive is is motive is the why you did something. Okay, so let's say you murdered a black man. Let's say your degree of intent is it's murder one, malice of forethought, premeditated, highest degree of mental intent per the model penal code, purposely. You murdered a black man, you meant to murder a black man. That's fine. What was your motive? Let's say your motive was that you really do hate black people. That's your motive. That's the why you did it. You hate black people is the reason why you went out and found a black man and murdered him. Okay, that's your motive. The motive is the why. Um, but that has nothing to say, why you did something has nothing to say about the degree to which you intended to do it. These are two separate concepts. Well, definitely two separate legal concepts. There's the degree to which you intended to perform an action, and then there's why you performed that action. And these are two separate concepts. So the motive is the why. Now, here's one other thing that people get hung up on, is that motive can be brought in as evidence of mental intent but you are still not making motive an element of the crime the motive the existence of a motive it's just it's not the what the it's not the substantive content of the motive and it's the substantive content of the motive that you cannot make an element of the crime the ex, the, the mere existence of a motive you can, you're not making that an element of the crime either. But what you can do is you can bring that in, the mere existence of a motive, you can bring in as evidence of mental intent. So that's probative of having mental intent, the mental intent to have, you know, performed this action, the requisite mental intent. So that's one other thing that people get hung up on. Now, um, so the reason why you can it's unconstitutional per the U.S. Constitution to make motive an element of the crime is because it would be a violation of the First Amendment because making a mo the motive, criminalizing motive, allegedly racist motives, and making that an element of the crime, I can't read your mind, okay? No one can read your mind. The only way I know why you performed an action is because one, you told me, or you wrote it down, or you made a blog post about it, or you tweeted about it on Twitter, um, right? So it's making motive an element of the crime, the why you did something an element of the crime. It's criminalizing your thoughts, but the only way I can know your thoughts is if you tell me, or you write it down, et cetera, et cetera. 
so you are it's it's making motive an element of the crime and that's why it's thought but really speech crime so it's thought but really speech crime and obviously that's unconstitutional right it's a violation of the first amendment that's why you can't make motive an element an element of the crime and that's why motive is different than um, mens rea, than mens rea. And so there are so many other reasons why uh, hate crime legislation is grossly unconstitutional, including double jeopardy and especially in the traditional forms of the hate crime legislation and a whole bunch of fair trial constitutional protections of which hate crime legislation is gross violation thereof. So um, I'm gonna talk, do more videos about that, but I just wanted to be really, really clear about the difference between mens rea or mental intent and motive, because so many people get hung up on this issue. Making motive an element of the crime is what is unconstitutional thought and speech crime, okay? And so, yeah, I think I'll stop there. I think that's good for now. And I'm planning on doing many more videos on Karen Acts and why they're so unconstitutional and why all of these Democratic state legislators and governors are complete idiots for promulgating these ridiculous, unconstitutional Karen Acts. And they're basically just saying, they're basically just flouting the U.S. Constitution. They're flouting the U.S. Constitution. They're flouting their oaths of office. And it's really bad. Okay, anyway, uh, so I'm going to leave it there. I have my PayPal me and GoFundMe links below. Please donate to my legal fund. Please support me so I can sue Yale and we can restore due process at Yale and everywhere. Okay, I love you all so much. Okay, have a great night. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.